In the past few decades, more and more people are getting interested in shamanism in the Western world, and more and more Westerners are practicing shamanism. So this begs the question, is there any difference between how shamanism is practiced in the Western world and how shamanism is practiced among indigenous shamanisms? Stay tuned if you want to find out. So first of all, let's address terminology. I am using the term neo-shamanism as an umbrella term to define all forms of shamanism that you find practiced by Westerners in the Western world. Forms of transcultural shamanism, which means they are not related to any specific place. By neo-shamanism, I will intend either imported and reinterpreted forms of traditional indigenous shamanisms or new forms of shamanisms born in the in the western world on the other hand when i talk about indigenous shamanisms i'm not getting too deep into the term indigenous because again we will have a whole video on that as well uh, but by indigenous shamanisms, I mean those forms of shamanisms that we tend to associate to traditional shamanisms practiced by indigenous people. We will have more videos in the future to explain all these aspects and all these traditions in more details. So as of yet, please bear with me and allow me to be a bit simplistic when it comes to the use of this terminology. So let's move on now. I was able to find in literature five main differences between the two. So the first trait that we find in neo-shamanism as opposed to uh, indigenous shamanisms is universalization. Universalization means that your practice in, is not local specific anymore. So whether you practice your ritual in Italy or in Africa or in France or in the US, you're supposed to get the same exact results. It doesn't matter really whether you are practicing your ritual in one specific country and also it doesn't really matter whether there's a specific cultural context which is the reason why um, this trait of universalization or universalizing is sometimes also called decontextualizing because not only does this mean that you can practice the ritual everywhere in the world but also practice is not local specific not context specific and not even cultural specific so you don't have to belong to a certain culture or to a certain place or to practice it according to um, the traditions of one specific place in order for your practice and for your ritual to be effective the second one is sometimes called sanitizing which means basically that all the dangerous and hazardous aspects of indigenous shamanism tend to be um, wiped out um, in neo-shamanism in the Western world. So, for example, the use of drugs and the use of um, extreme physical conditions, for example, during initiations or during uh, certain specific rituals, uh, not to be found uh, really in neo-shamanism um, in the West. So these tend to be basically removed uh, so that the, the practice is sanitized, um, as the word itself says. The third difference is that neo-shamanism and Western shamans tend to be more interested in the self rather than the community. So this means, for example, that uh, a Western shaman might perform a ritual um, or might engage with shamanism to find inner peace or uh, his or her higher self. And even though they often help other people, it is more based on the, on the individual. So whether it be the shaman himself or herself, or the individual you are trying to help. So it is a more on a one-to-one -one basis, rather than being in charge of the welfare and the health of a community. The fourth difference is 
sometimes called romanticizing. Often in Western neo-shamanism, there's the idea of, of shamanism itself and of indigenous shamans around the world as uh, these mystical figures, these spiritual beings that are somehow transcending the material world and the interests related to the material world. This also translates in the idea that the shamanic practice is mostly or always good so that when you do your shamanic journey, for example, you cannot really find anything dangerous and the spirits that you are going to encounter are mostly believed to be benevolent uh, and not harmful to the individual who's doing the shamanic journey. The fifth trait is somewhat connected to the fourth one and it is often called in literature cultural primitivism. Cultural primitivism is explained by Gertz as follows. The main characteristic of cultural primitivism is that the ideal mode of life is thought to be led by contemporary so-called primitive or savage peoples, especially peoples in far-off exotic places. Thus, a basic motivating factor in cultural primitivism is the attraction of the exotic. You find this idea that there was a golden age in the in the past before civilization took over when people were in harmony living a better life basically than the one we are living now uh, perhaps more in contact with nature or more in line with um, seasonal changes so it is basically this idea that there was this sort of golden age in the past where human beings were living a better life especially from a spiritual point of view there's a tendency in the among western practitioners to see indigenous shamanisms and indigenous peoples around the world somehow living in that golden age where things were better and more in harmony with nature and spirituality was more core to the day-to-day -day life of people. And by doing that, it is somehow locating these indigenous traditions in a place outside of time, or at least outside of our contemporary civilized time and age, so that they are still living in that golden age era where humankind had not been disconnected by nature and their spirituality yet. So this is somehow a way of seeing civilization as we know it today as something that is deteriorating our spiritual lives as well as seeing people who live by a different social structure as outside of this negative outlook on life brought about our contemporary social structure. A very interesting article, which I tend to cite a lot, <laughs> is Johnson's article Shamanism from Ecuador to Chicago. Johnson talks about all these differences that you find between neo-shamanism, especially in his article he mentions core shamanism, and the indigenous shamanism of the Schwarz from the Ecuadorian region. So that's why uh, the article is called Shamanism from Ecuador to Chicago. And basically he explains that neo-shamanism actually has a theoretical framework, which is what Berger calls radical modernity. So Johnson writes, Neo-shamans can be distinguished from shamans by their reliance on a context of radical modernity. Radical modernity entails the rationalization of society which relies on universal, standardized conceptions of time and space, and the confrontation with a plurality of religions, which leads to a focus on individual agency, choice, needs and preference in the religious marketplace, and an obsession with the self, subjectivity and reflexivity. The discourse of mobility, individuals are free and capable of converting to any religious system in any place at any time because space is phantasmagoric 
and dislocated from place. They are not really sacred spaces, but rather only sacred states of mind and sacred relationships with abstract deities. It's also important for me to point out that these are not critics to Western shamans or Western neo-shamanism, but actually these are just differences that have been pointed out by quite a few scholars in the literature regarding um, neo-shamanism or transcultural shamanism or the shamanism that has been increasingly practiced in the western world and how this manifests and since before the advent of shamanism in the western world the main references that scholars had were those belonging to indigenous people so Siberian shamanism, Andean shamanism, Amazonian shamanism and so on and so forth. Of course, when Western shamanism came to be and became more and more practice, normally we tend to understand things by comparisons. And so the first comparison, of course, was the comparison between Western shamanism and the indigenous forms that had been already studied by ethnographers and anthropologists. Whereas in more recent years you will find more and more studies on different forms of neo-shamanism per se without having to rely on this comparison. So I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions leave them down below in the comment section and I will be happy to reply to them all. If you like this video smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell so that you won't miss anything out, and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now.